a biochemist or molecular biologist, you will regularly work with various buffer solutions, which ensure optimal conditions for enzymatic reactions or isolation of subcellular components. The concentrations of the buffer components are quite precise, yet the reaction volumes range between tens to hundreds microliters and rarely exceed several milliliters. Weighing out the required tiny amounts of buffer components is hard. The accuracy of most precision balances is on the order of a milligram, and the most precise analytical balance will measure with accuracy between tens to hundreds of micrograms only. Rather than fighting with tiny amounts of reagents, we usually prepare buffers from concentrated stock solutions. This is very much like making a cocktail by mixing several concentrated components. We can dilute concentrated stock solutions to the final needed concentration. How do we determine the volume of the stock to add so that we reach the needed final concentration? You are probably familiar with this proportion. It is essentially the mathematical description of the law of mass conservation, saying that the number of molecules in the smaller volume of the concentrated stock is exactly the same as in the final volume of the diluted buffer. This gives you the formula for calculating the volume of the stock to add in order to reach the required final concentration. Now, let me describe you a universal and easy way of dealing with stock dilutions. I want to introduce a so-called dilution factor, which is nothing but the ratio of the stock to final concentration. This is a unitless factor which tells you how much you need to dilute the stock solution in order to get to the final concentration. A dilution factor does not depend on the way the concentration is expressed and is very easy to calculate. For example, to get the 50 millimolar tris, we need to dilute one molar stock by a factor of 20. 50 mg per million pistolin stock should be diluted 1000 times to reach the working concentration of 50 micrograms per milliliter. And 10% SDS must be diluted 10 times to get a 1% final concentration. Once you know the dilution factor, the required volume is calculated by dividing the final volume by the corresponding dilution factor. Thus, to make a total of 10 ml of the buffer containing 50 ml tris and 1% SDS, we need to mix 500 microliter 1 ml tris stock and 1 ml 10% SDS stock and fill it up with water to a final volume of 10 ml. Similarly, to make 12 ml LB broth with 50 microgram per milliliter ampicillin, you simply need to add 12 microliter stock ampicillin solution into 12 ml broth. Using dilution factors is an easy and foolproof way to calculate the required volume of the stocks. Sometimes the corresponding concentration factors are used to complex buffer stocks to indicate how much they should be diluted. For example, an optimal buffer for the enzyme T4DNA ligase contains 50 millimolar tris pH 7.6, 10 millimolar magnesium chloride, 1 millimolar ATP and DTT, and 5% polyethylene glycol. The typical ligase reaction volumes range between 10 and 100 microliters. To let the experimentalist choose the best reaction volume, the T4 ligase buffer stock is provided as a 10 times concentrated solution, containing 500 millimolar tris, 100 micromolar, uh, sorry, 100 millimolar magnesium chloride, 10 millimolar ATP, and so on. It is often referred to as 10 times concentrated stock, or just 10x stock. To achieve the final concentration, which is by default assumed to correspond to 1x, you'd need to add 1 microliter for 10 microliter total reaction volume, 5 microliter for 50, 10 microliter for 100 reaction volume, and so on. To calculate the required volume of the stock solution, you need to calculate the dilution factor by dividing stock to final concentration, then calculate the required volume of the stock 
by dividing the final volume by the dilution factor, repeat these steps for each component of the final buffer and fill up to the final volume using the corresponding solvent, most often water.